Okay, so cultural appropriation. What do I think? Let's take a step back from your assumptions here. What I actually think is that the arguments against cultural appropriation are broadly very right-wing and, and do not belong on the left. These kids do not know their left from right, and I am now going to proceed to tear down the cultural appropriation argument from the left. Exposing these kids not as Marxists, but as Burkean conservatives, who have been confused by the master manipulator, Foucault. These were, there were battles being fought over relics and whatnot between indigenous groups and museums. Okay, in many cases, we were talking about direct theft in the colonial period, and a kind of theory developed out of this. Now, if you want to look at the actual issue that was being discussed, um, in most cases, yeah, I would argue in favor of returning the relics. It, like I say, in a lot of cases, you know, you've got some conquistador showed up, you know, slaughtered the natives, stole their stuff, and sent it off to Spain. And now it's sitting there in a museum. Of course they should send it back. And the only reason the museum doesn't agree is because they're making money off of it. It's, it's, it's untenable. It's, it's an absurd argument. What you need to do is you need to sit these people down, have a few beers, and just, you know, smack some logic into them, get them out, you know, make them feel really bad. No, like, really, honestly. You're going to sit there and you're going to say you should hold on to these relics. You should make them fucking cry over this. Sit them down, have a beer with them, and make them break them down, make them start fucking sobbing, admit they're wrong, and not only are they going to send the relics back, but they're going to give them reparations at the end of it, because they realize that they're being assholes. That's not a legal argument, right? Now, believe it or not, that's not a legal argument. Instead, we had a theory develop out of it. Okay, but because we live in a right-wing society, the theory that developed out of it was very right-wing. Surprise! It became it was a very proprietarian, very tribal theory, and I cannot uphold any of it because it can't be synthesized with any left-wing concept of property. I know, I know. You think that you're taking the side of the repressed indigenous group. But you're not actually. You're upholding a colonial system of property and you're applying it to a repressed indigenous group. And you're enforcing colonial concepts of property onto cultures that did not have concepts of property. It's actually very colonial. The cultural appropriation, all right, it's not post-colonialism, it is colonialism. Because these ideas are not indigenous. They come out of colonial legal systems to try to deal with uh, conflicts that have developed out of theft. So let's get out of the colonial legal system and let's take a look at what this idea is. Cultural appropriation relies on a kind of idea of tribal property that assigns intellectual property rights to members of a tribe based on their membership in that tribe, thereby excluding use of that intellectual property to individuals outside of the tribe. You can, you can type that up and there'll, there'll be a test in the morning. I, I don't think that this is the right argument to use if you want the relics back. I think the relics are the collective property of the tribe held in common. Ah. Not a right-wing propertarian argument, but an actual left-wing concept of property. How about that? And we can use this argument to get to the same end, but now I'm at a different point in the spectrum ideologically, and I'm going to come to different conclusions. Because this property isn't intellectual, it's physical. It's a, you know, it's a warhead, or it's a uh, it's some pottery, or it's a sculpture or something. It's their stuff, right? And it should be thought of as their personal property if you can take the idea to a collective abstraction. The personal property of the tribe is the collective property of the tribe. Got that? 
We don't need to come up with these ideas of things being appropriated. We can just say, this is theirs. This physical thing belongs to them. Very simple. This physical thing belongs to them, and it was stolen from them, and it should be returned. We don't need any crazy theory. The simple nuts and bolts, you know, of, of, of the reality in front of us is good enough. I think. But instead we got this theory that came out of it. And it runs into a lot of trouble when you actually start looking at it. Again, not from a right-wing liberal perspective, but from a left-wing, you know, anarchist, socialist, communist perspective. Because what you're doing is you're abstracting the idea of a physical ownership of a physical good into tribal ownership of an idea or concept. And you can do this if you're on the right, because you believe in private property. But if you're on the left and you don't believe in private property, and you run into the contradiction that you are now upholding a concept of private property that is meant to operate at the exclusion of others, and you've been tricked. They brought you in telling you that you were helping the repressed, you know, the repressed noble savages. You're in here to help them. And now what they've done is they've twisted this around on you, and they've got you upholding capitalist concepts of property rights. They got you. Now, does that mean that these kids are all a bunch of confused socialists and they don't really know? I don't think it does. I don't think that this is cognitive dissonance. In fact, I think that if you ask them about property, you'll realize that most of the people that are making this argument, their concept of property is actually fairly consistent with this. And the reason that it's not confusing them and it's not it's not freaking them out, you know, it, it never it never occurs to them is because they're capitalists. <laughs> they have very liberal ideas of property. So they're not confused socialists that need to change their views on appropriation to align with their views on property. They're confused conservatives that don't realize how right-wing their ideas about property really are. So you get, you get these arguments from the right, you know, that are calling them socialists, and they call themselves socialists and everything else. So you might listen to what I'm saying and say, wait a second, if they're really socialists, shouldn't they oppose this? Okay, maybe if they were really socialists, but they're not really socialists. And if you take their their views of, 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 on this, and you compare it with their views on property rights in general, what you'll find out pretty quickly is that you're not arguing with a socialist. And if you're on the right, you got tricked too. Because they told you that those people over there were leftists. And they're not. They're conservatives. A true leftist would seek to abolish tribal control of private property and distribute it fairly amongst all people. Now, of course, that doesn't mean it's okay to be a racist. Taking away the cultural appropriation argument oftentimes does little more than lay the racism out starkly, right? If you take away the complicated words, the big words, you know, the really they're buzzwords. If you take these away and you, you know, you kind of drop the fuzzy thinking, the end point that you get in most of these arguments is not that this is okay. It's just that it becomes that much clearer that it's not okay. And so I, what you're going to see if you look at sort of the issue after issue the cultural appropriation card is more often than not used by racists, right? <laughs> to obscure how, how obvious their misconduct is. 
and they get into this blurry, confused argument about property rights that nobody really is able to think properly through because they don't really have the background to do it. And what, what, what you're doing is you're, you're distracting your, uh, what's the word they use? Uh, you're derailing the, the real issue, right? The irony of it. I have a lot to say about these general kinds of things. What, defi what defines everything on all sides is like, it's a lot of Orwellian trash being thrown around back and forth. They're both brainwashed. And they're both totally confused about what they're saying. But what is my position as a leftist? As somebody that does not accept concepts of property rights? Is that the idea that a tribe owns something or owns a concept of something that does not that is not consistent with any idea of property that I can uphold. And I'm not going to uphold anybody's right to be a racist, but I'm not going to give anybody exclusive ownership of ideas. And I'm just going to leave you with kind of an idea here. If we did abstract this idea here, and we did allow tribes to have intellectual property over things that they've invented, whether it's their food or it's their culture, what would that leave white people with? And do you really want to uphold that? I know... Stop. I know you haven't thought this through. You weren't supposed to think it through.